It's also then I can make sure everything's working. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you have any big plans for the weekend? Uh, no, not well. Actually, a friend in from Israel. Um, he's just moving to the states, but so he's just you know still in for the first time and experiencing. I mean, he was in America when he was like a little kid, he said, but as an adult, uh, he's uh, actually doing a doctorate program in Yale. They're paying him oh, to. Oh wow! They're paying him to work whatever he wants. So he literally, I was like, oh, like, what's your schedule? He's like, oh, I don't know. I get to choose it. It's like literally, he gets to build his own research projects and and all sorts of cool stuff. So it's like a wow. five year program through Yale. That's amazing. That's really right. Cool. But, you know, part so, of like grad school is that the, like you're not supposed to pay for it. It's like the secret. <laughs> or at least right. Well, and in, and, in, <laughs> and in this case, they're pay they're paying him. It's a you know it's a true salaried position. So it's awesome. a very cool That's a really cool program. Cool. Yeah. All right. That sounds like a cool guy. Um, I am driving up to Gainesville to go to Boy Scout camp on Sunday. <laughs> Ooh, very nice. <laughs> Or I will be sleeping in bed for a week. <laughs> I have I have a, a whole group of friends that actually ended up e- like all the way up to Eagle Scouts. Really? Um, and they're all still close friends today. They're part of my my close friend group. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's a my good... kids are my son's working on his project. My older daughter's like almost caught up to him, and my little right. girl started in the pandemic, so she hasn't gotten very far yet. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> I went to boy camp growing up, so I'm 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 all for camping that's, and outdoors. Yeah, and... That's probably more fun than a week of Boy Scout. Uh, I don't know. Whatever. It's fun. We have a good time every time. It's just, you know, summer camping in the rain can suck. In Florida. In Florida. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. Um, you want to get started? Should yeah, sure. Let's do it. All right. We remember to hit the record button. <laughs> All right. Good morning. It is Finance Friday. I am Beth Hochberger, CPA, CGMA, and I have a very special guest today. Craig Epi from the Epi Group. Um, if you're around Broward County, you have probably heard of them. Um, I know I've I've heard of the company from like my involvement in federation, uh, and these are some quality quality people. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, special needs financial planning, which I really personally don't know very much about. So Craig, how did you even get into this? Um, it's a, it's definitely a long, a long story at this point. We're, we're a family firm. So my father started our firm and when he was, I mean, really probably just like a year or two into the business, she was, there was a woman that was one of his first clients that he truthfully just sold her life insurance. I mean, that's how it started and she, because she needed it, but then she came back to him because she happened to just get a vibe for him and she knew how his brain worked. And as soon as special needs planning came into existence in the law in 1993, when when they took irrevocable trust and said, you can make a special needs irrevocable trust and here's how it's gonna work. She came back to him saying, like, how do I do, how do, I do special needs planning? We gotta figure out, you know, what I'm gonna do here. And, you know, 30 years later, he's a national expert in the topic. He, he helped create uh, a large, uh, there's a special care program inside of Mass Mutual that he actually helped create with a few other guys internally um, almost 20 years ago now. Um, and we've been doing doing this stuff for 30 years now. So I mean, we've become well-rounded experts from, from practical you know, experience. And then of course, a lot of, you know, just back end special needs training. So you guys, like, you know what you're doing. If you got into it at the beginning, I don't want to say how old it was, 1993, but like, that, that's relatively new. I mean, trusts are not a new thing in general, but this very specific use case is fairly Ooh. new then, right? Um, Absolutely. So who, it, it literally this, did not exist beforehand. Yeah. Who is this for? Like, who can use this? Is this only, like, if you have a kid you need to take care of or... This is this is specific. I mean, if you have a kid you need to take care of, that's great. But truthfully, the, the the base factor of it is going to be did did the individual have a disability before age twenty six, right? Normally, you're talking about something that they probably had at birth, but if they had a a, tra- a traumatic accident at fifteen years old and are left in a wheelchair without the ability to do all sorts of things, they would qualify. Um, and so there are a lot of things that um, can qualify and it's truthfully based off the social security, I think it's called the social security blue book that actually shows 
list of, of qualified disabilities when you go to Social Security to get the list. And if you qualify for the Social Security benefit on that list, that's what opens the door to all this planning. Okay, so that's really an interesting thing. Um, what, uh, how do I phrase this? How, like, how is it different than just like a regular trust? Aside from the, you know, the obvious, like somebody with special needs that's specifically for them. Does it, are the like financial on the On the trust side. Or, like, yeah, how, how does it work? The way, the way you plan is, it's honestly, it's honestly, the, the unfortunate part is that it's no different than any other irrevocable trust. Okay. The only difference is that it literally has language that says, this individual has a disability and you will not distribute income directly to them. Stuff can be paid for their benefit, right? You want to take money from the trust and pay the electric bill or pay for the house or the vacation, you can do it, but you're never going to put money in their name because if they get more than $2,000 in their name, and this is really where the planning starts to become tricky, if they get more than $2,000 in their name, they get disqualified from all of their income, health, and supplemental benefits from the government. Okay, so that's really the key, is that you want to make sure that whoever is needing to benefit from this is able to maintain their benefits, right? Correct. Yeah, it's that's... all about protecting the benefits. I mean, that is the core of it. And then it's, well, these benefits are great, but the health insurance is paid for. I'm getting other services paid for. That's awesome. Then I get seven, $800 max of income from the government, which they're a, they're a qualified survivor. So when a parent goes on social security, they get an increase in their income from let's say around 800 to somewhere around the $1,200 mark, but that's it, that's their income. And so if you live in a house and your house is paid for, but you still owe taxes and insurance every year and electric bill and you know maintenance, $1,200 a month, I mean, that's gonna eat up most of it. Um, and yes, you, but very quickly. <laughs> you right you might have a little bit of extra right so you might have right. a little bit of room for food but there's a huge gap that parents are going okay here's all this other stuff i pay for right. that when i'm not there who's paying for it right and, and so I that's imagine that's that's the scary thing right i mean even if you don't ha need have a child with special needs like you know i think about my kids like oh what are they going to do like at college if i'm not there to remind them to like you know do well, their laundry or whatever i can't even imagine you're in a situation with special needs. And it's like, well, what happens after I'm gone, right? That's a very terrifying thought. It, no, it's it's exactly the thought, which is why once we figure out the finances, that's great. It is why I have to do financial planning within special needs planning because it's a double retirement. But for me, it's all about a comprehensive special needs plan, right? When I do special needs planning, it's not just about the finances. It's about getting them signed up on those benefits because they don't even know about them sometimes or how they work or when to do it. It's about making sure that they know what kind of trust work they need and what type of guardianship they may need because there's multiple forms of all these things, right? It's not just a one option thing. And, and if they go to a good attorney, they're probably going to get good advice, but they don't even, you know, I think in very common in the business world, we understand how many kinds of attorneys there are and how to go to which one for what. <laughs> the, the regular, the regular <laughs> family, the regular family with you know a mom that's struggling through all of this stuff, trying to raise a child and figure out, they might not know all the different types of attorneys right. and how they get used, and they need a guide, they need a shepherd. I always we always refer to it as the quarterback, like they need, you need a quarterback <laughs> on the field to throw the ball around, right? But I try to use a million different analogies to get people to understand what what is someone like myself doing because it's so much more than every one single topic. It's so much more than financial planning. It's so much more than guiding them in the right direction. For me, it's all about implementation, mm -hmm. right? It's I don't care if you were told what a plan needs to look like. If it doesn't get in place, I didn't do right. my job or we didn't get to the goal and, and I'm right. not I'm not happy. Um, right. I unfortunately that's am not so helpful, right? To have the plan and not execute it. And I see all no. the time, not these specific kinds of trust, but I see so frequently 
uh, have client who comes to me and they're like, okay, here, you know, do my taxes. By the way, we set up a trust and now, you know, this property's in it, that property's in it. And you go and you look and you're like, uh, you created a document. <laughs> you did not put anything in the trust. And people are always so shocked. I like, have what do you mean? My... I didn't do it. The lawyer said it was done. I'm like, well, maybe it was a different lawyer that you I... need to talk to for more pieces of it. I don't know if everyone's a fan of the Zoolander movie, but there is a scene when literally the Owen Wilson is grabbing a computer because he was told that the files were inside the computer. And he's holding the computer going, I've got the files. And he literally throws the computer and smashes it, thinking that the files are going to be inside. That's how a trust works, right? <laughs> and that's how people paper. think. A, and that's how people think a trust works. And I'm like, no, 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 no. It's a house. It's a bank account. It's a it's right. a computer. It's it's right. who's right. the ownership titled to right. that's going to then give the trust the ability to say, no, no, I own that house. I own that bank account. If not, it's it's literally my dad has to say, without money. The trust isn't even worth the paper that it's printed on. It's true. Um, it's true. It's and and true. and as cheap as that is, it's literally true. And you're going to go spend two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars on this yeah. trust work and all this legal work. It it's got to. It. It's got to make sense. And so, so I literally, yeah. with special needs planning, I actually tell people the first thing I'm concerned about in the big picture is financial security, or in most cases for people, it's some form of life insurance. Because if you do a trust, it's great. But if you don't have money, it doesn't matter. And so if you have the life insurance in place and something happens, as long as there's a trusted individual that you could leave that money to, well, they'll take the first three grand or so and go get the legal work done, right? And then they'll take the rest of the money and put it in the trust because anybody can put money into a third party special needs trust and anybody can start the third party needs trust for the individual oh really it doesn't have to be like a parent or a it could be a grandparent and i mean it, it absolutely it's it's oh, it's know. a third party trust it has to be done by a third party so if your whole family wanted to get together to help you with this particular individual that needed support they can all chip in they can. And in fact, when I do planning with people, we have a process of talking about, first of all, the attorney's going to do it too a little bit, hopefully, talk about role players, right? Trustees, guardians, people that care about the individual because I can't have, I, I've had it, right? Grandfather leaves a $10,000 life insurance policy titled beneficiary to the grandson. Disqualifies. Now, we quickly took that That's money bad planning and, right that's bad planning and we quickly took the money and put it into what's called there's a there's a new account in the last couple of years called an able account well that's in florida it's really uh there's a couple of, I, I think there's i can't remember what the act is in the and from the national level i, I think it's but every called state able. it's able yeah the federal but level. there's a there's, there's when little they created it but yeah there's little names that every state might call their program a little differently. Ours right. is called Able United, right, in the yeah. state of Florida. I don't, and I don't know the and they're they're essentially, if, if people aren't familiar, it's essentially a 529 account with a special needs wrapper, right? You can invest it the way you would invest a 529 account, and you could get tax efficiency for saving for college, except now this isn't for just education. This can be for living expenses and, and a whole bunch more from a special needs perspective. You go on their website, There's it's very easy to go to the qualified expenses tab to on their website and, and see exactly what can be used for the money because we don't want a lot of money in there. We can't really have more than $100,000 or it re it re-looks at their benefits and they can get disqualified from their benefits if they have more than a hundred thousand in the account. And that's going against what we're trying to do, right? That's well so that's here's we the whole thing plan. with special needs <laughs> special needs planning is 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 a is a is a, a mind explosion because you have a special needs trust and irrevocable trust is taxed at the highest tax rate of the day above somewhere from twelve to fourteen thousand dollars, depending on how you're structured, right? Yeah. But you're only going to get twelve to say, or sorry, say twelve to sixteen thousand. Twelve to sixteen thousand dollars, right? Out of that trust, tax efficiently, and then every dollar is taxed at the highest rate of the day. So there are some 
creative things we do in planning to try to help avoid taxation of you know legally that's my favorite um, part. <laughs> right legal legal tax avoidance is is the only way we can look at it right because avoidance we have <laughs> well, and, well and we have to make sure that this is a structure that someone else that has no idea can take over right, right? and so you know, there's so much that has to go into it and the taxation side puts you on the wealthy scale meaning it's mm. we're being taxed like the wealthy the right. benefits we're protecting inside the trust are designed for the indigent, right? They're designed for, for people that are making below the income levels right, in the right. poverty level. And now you're stuck doing planning for someone that qualifies to both of those. Nowhere else. I mean, someone might do Medicaid planning, right? right. To get into a nursing home, but they're getting rid of all their stuff. They're at the end of their life. It's totally it's different, different than a 25-year-old. or a, right. Yeah. Yeah, you're... Yeah, you're like, how do I distribute my assets like kind of before I pass and make it look like I don't have anything so I can get those benefits, not how do we keep the assets as long as possible to take care of the person as long as possible. And it's a five year look back. That's the same look back in special needs, right? That's where special needs is just like a hodgepodge mesh of a bunch of different things that already existed in, in the American structure and system. Yeah. And they said, here's how you're gonna here's how you're gonna do it. And there's not a lot of people that have figured that out and know how to facilitate people from A to Z to get to the benefits and, and, and really hold their hand and implement them into these plans. And you had hinged on something else, like, oh my kid goes to college and what happens? My clients Literally, I give them a 40-page letter of intent that is detailed from social media logins to daily schedules to habits to hopes and dreams to medical information. I mean, it's, 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 it's so detailed because that's where all, all the real information is. The trust says, here's the house, here's the money, protect the benefits. That's it. Right. Wow, that's the, crazy. And I, the, I wouldn't even think the, that you needed to get into that detail, but I guess it makes sense. Like you're talking about taking care of someone's entire like existence, basically without these parents. The parents there, yeah. These parents literally worry about well, how does my child get on the bus or the top top? Since in Florida is a, a, a common program that'll it's a driving service, right? How, how do I make sure my child gets on their service, whether it's Uber or Tops or a bus, right, and right. gets to their program or work? And who's going to, I mean, yes, they know how to shower, but if someone's not there to re keep reminding them, right, how right. long is that going to stay up? And who's going to make sure they keep cleaning their house? Because they know how to mop and, and, and do things when we tell them to. But if I don't keep guiding him, you know, and they worry about those structures, and there is a med waiver benefit that is designed to help monitor that population and help with those services. Wow. There is a seven to nine year waiting list, pretty much minimum. Holy cow, that's crazy. That's really so crazy. <laughs> I try to get to people as early as possible when I'm doing their planning to get them on the waiting list because if their kid's five years old, yeah, wait till it, you're taking care of them now, it's okay. Right when they're 18 or when they move out and when they really need this stuff, it's going to be there. They're going to be much higher on the waiting list and there is an emergency option, but you got to really qualify for that. I mean, that's, that's not an easy qualification to, to qualify as an emergency. Gotcha. So that's a great segue to my next question was, which was going to be timing, right? Is this one it's of those huge. things where like the sooner the better, like if you know, like if you have a child with special needs at an early age, should you, hop on this do you wait till they're older how, how, what do you recommend it's, for people it's all across the board first it's you have to have diagnosis and certain things so you know some people don't get diagnosis till a little bit later and it's important right you might have a child with high functioning autism right and they might not get a diagnosis my my cousin has I mean it was Asperger's is what it was called back then and they changed the some of the language on it but he wasn't diagnosed until he was 15 years old, right? Like he was, he's a smart functioner. He lives in an apartment by himself. He doesn't need like a med waiver type benefit. He does have his mom and parents, you know, once a month maybe or so they're checking on him, but they live in Florida. He's in Ohio. I mean, like he's, he, he works, he's self-sufficient for the most part. Um, if you don't have diagnosis, you can't do this, the plan. 
So diagnosis is the first thing, right? Okay. Then Don't it's then it, then it's acceptance, right? Then talk about timing. It's acceptance because especially talk about the fathers. There's there's can be a complex there, and it's okay, right? It's time to to emotionally understand that this is not something I'm fixing, right? They're going to get better. They're going to have a happy life, but I'm not fixing this. You have to manage. And yeah. and once they have acceptance of that then they're probably ready to talk because even if the mom accepts and the dad doesn't, I promise you I'm going to hit a wall and I'm not going to be able to help execute in most cases. Did you know that when you were going into this field that you were also like a, a therapist? Counselor? <laughs> <laughs> people don't appreciate that. Like us financial advisory people, we do yep. a lot of therapy for people. <laughs> <laughs> I get it all the time and I'm like, wow, okay. I'm I am in we are in the middle. <laughs> we are in the middle of yeah. every emotional thing in people's yeah. lives because what I like to say is everything you think of, there's a monetary effect of it. Right. You have to pay money for everything you deal with. And that means there's a conversation of money to deal with with it. And that's its own and problem. Without a special need situation, that's its own problem. <laughs> my, my, my dad says, he used to ask people questions where he would say to someone like, do you know what the, the number one cause of divorce is in America? And it's money. And that's why he asked the question. But if you ask the question and you didn't give them the answer, you leave room for them to give you an answer that they think is the number one reason. So literally my father was at a table with a husband and wife and he said, you know what the number one thinking, they're not going to say anything. And he'll say it's money and you know, and that's why we need to be smart. And, and she looks at her husband cold face and goes cheating. <laughs> and, and, no he, right, and, he, and he tried to keep a straight face, but like, I mean, talk about, I mean, he's sitting right there. Talk about being right in the middle of their, of their marital, you know, issues. There is, there is absolute oh, no, therapy going counselor. on. What we do. <laughs> That's awesome. But some, Sorry. but you know what? And I was going to yeah. say it before, but I'm an empath. So it's, it's honestly, my brother says it's a problem in our business because at the end of the day, I truly, there are many situations that I truly, for some reason, care more than the client does. And it's tough because I'm pushing like, no, we've got to solve this. I, I, you know, I don't sleep well at night. Right. And, and yeah. I can't care more than the client in that sense that I can only right. make someone help someone with a plan that they want to execute. Right. And if they're not, and that's they where I use, I use it a hundred percent. And if they don't, yeah. and if, and I'll use my empath to help them. I say, I'm a higher pain in the butt. You get me on and, <laughs> and I will push this thing to the finish line and nudge it and push it. And, and set reminders. And I mean, I am a hands-on person, um, but, but you've got to be, you know, you've got to be happy about it. You know, you, you right. can't, you can't avoid my calls or it doesn't work. I hear you. All right, Craig, I got one last question. Sure. Have any, this has nothing to do with special needs planning. Like this was a very serious one. So we're going to make it a little fun. Okay. Or fun. Okay. Perfect. Do you have any like strange hobbies or Thing interesting about you that we can hear about? <laughs> Strange hobby. I mean, I would say my biggest hobby truly is skiing. I love to go snow that's skiing. That's not strange. Well, so that's not strange. Florida. But like Florida. in Florida, there's a lot of people that don't do it. So like, you know, it's, yeah. it's sometimes a little. Um, I'm a huge, I would say two things, right? I'm a huge movie buff. So I love quoting movies and I'm definitely, you know, I thought I was normal and then people told me I was weird because I say all these strange movie lines that people don't pick up on. Like Zoolander um, references. <laughs> right, like Zoolander references. Like I would have quoted it, but instead I explained it because I thought that would have been more helpful. Um, but I would have loved to quote now. it, right? I would have I would have loved to just say the files are in the computer. And people um, would be like, what? What does that mean? <laughs> and... And the str honestly, the strangest thing about me, I think, is I am a pretty firm believer in ghosts. I grew up in a house in Ohio uh, that was uh, from the 1800s that uh, we had, I mean, dozens and dozens and dozens of ghost interactions. We believe all the same ghosts. It was a house built by the mayor in Ohio, or in Columbus, in where we were, and he built a second property. And we swear 
the neighbors had similar experiences in their property to ours. And those were the two houses that he built and owned and lived in. <laughs> and they were not far apart. Right? There, like these huh? were, it was literally a one story home. And we were in like a four, a three, a two story home with an attic and a basement. And he built the second home because he got older and needed a one story home. And I mean, we had, I mean, I could give you ghost stories for days. So that's probably the strangest thing that I've Have you ever done that tour in Fort Lauderdale? The, the, the Stranahan uh, yeah. house and all that. Yeah, it's. A, I mean, it's a cool <laughs> one. I didn't experience like, anything. The curtain moved. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but isn't there a fan in the sale? Like, I don't. But I mean, we we, we legit had like, like busters in there. <laughs> my dad had a sliding glass door close in front of him. Um, my oh mom my God, had chills. Stop it. <laughs> My, my, I always remember that. You know that movie? Uh, I think it was called uh, Hollow Man with Kevin Bacon, where he goes and in, he goes invisible. No. My mom no. literally see movie references. Like it's always yeah. what I'm doing. My mom literally, she saw the bed next to her, like sink down once. I would have to move out. I would be able to handle it. <laughs> Honestly. We did ultimately, but not because of that. Honestly, when we, I mean, when we bought our house, they had to do like. Like not, it's, a, it's not like a real like ghost inspection, but the, I remember reading that there was like some kind of clause about it being haunted because the, the owner, the previous owner, died, and I was like, "Is this really?" A th- <laughs> Did you do a haunted? seance? You got to do a seance, right? I think that's what you have. To I do. don't know. I wasn't there for that part. Maybe it's part of the inspection that I missed. But <laughs> I have a friend. She'll come burn some sage and and do some crystals yeah, you and your house a little bit. Get yeah, the, the bad spirits out. <laughs> Get all the juju out. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, Craig, this was fantastic. Thank you so much. We're going to put your info on because I'm sure there are so many people who are going to see this and be like, you know what? I, I need to get. I I, t- I touched on the tip of the iceberg. I am happy yeah. to help people. I love being an educator and a resource and happy to do a consultation with someone if they need a phone call to, to chat and understand and figure out their timing because once they get past that acceptance stage, then they still got to have time, right? Like there's timing is imperative in this process. So happy to help people understand more, especially figure out their own timing. Awesome. Thank you so, so much. Um, we're going to put your contact info everywhere. And if anyone has any questions about this and it's so important, you know, feel free, reach out to me, reach out to Craig, and we will get you in touch with whoever you need to talk to, to make sure you get what you need. Absolutely. All right. Happy Friday. Thank you so much. Happy Friday. See you next time.